So today we're going to be discussing a very important discovery in physics. This actually won Albert Einstein his Nobel Prize, and it's called the photoelectric effect. Okay, so what is the photoelectric effect? Well, let's discuss the experimental setup, and then we'll develop an understanding of the physics as we go through it. So first off, you start off with a metal surface, okay? I'm just going to draw this little plane as the metal. You can make it iron, but more commonly you would see it in something like sodium that has what we call a low work function. So what's a work function? Basically, metals have little particles called electrons in them. All matter does. But in metals, they're particularly weakly bound. It means it's easy to pull them off. Okay? And a work function is just a measure of how hard it is to pull it off. Let me give you an example through gravitation. So imagine I'm on a building, okay? And I'm standing up top. And I have a little fishing pole, okay? And now there's a bowling ball at the bottom. Basically, to pull it all the way up to the top of the building to where I am, I have to put an energy equal to mgh, okay? The bigger m is, the more energy I have to put in, and the bigger h is, the more energy I have to put in. Basically, you can kind of think of electrons in a metal being the same way. They're just like the bowling ball. And certain metals have either higher skyscrapers, bigger h, or the M is effectively bigger because the electron is more attracted to the nucleus. And both of those affect the total energy E that you have to pull it out, which is called the work function. Okay, so now that we've discussed the work function at length, let's continue talking about this experiment. So I have my sheet of metal with all my electrons in it, and now I'm going to say my work function is E, okay? And E is the energy I need to pull one of these electrons up and out of the metal all the way. Okay? So the question is, is how do we pull these electrons out? Well, obviously, we don't have a man standing there with a fishing rod pulling them out. We need some sort of other tool. Electrons are very small, and they're hard to interact with individually. We can't put a fishing hook through them. But what we can do is we can use electric and magnetic fields. And the way we do this is we use light, because, and this is discussed in a different lecture, light is actually built from electric and magnetic fields. So basically this is saying I can have a big light bulb, and it's shining, okay? And then some of those light rays will hit the metal and they'll actually kick electrons off. And you can think of this interaction almost like a momentum thing where you have the electron with lowercase e, and then you're going to have a chunk of light come in and hit the electron, and it'll kick the electron up. And the amount of kick it gets is actually related to the energy of the light. Okay? And now this is going to get a little bit more complicated, but this is really why the photoelectric effect is important. The really big thing that Einstein discovered with the photoelectric effect was he concluded that light must come in little chunks, which is different than what anyone had said before. Everyone had said that light was a wave. And Einstein said, no, for light to interact with these individual little electrons and kick them, there must be individual little particles of light. And he called these particles photons. And I'm going to briefly conclude with a consequence of this. So basically, the word we use to describe what's going on with why light is in particles is we say light is quantized, okay? Quantized means stored in little chunks called quanta. And the quanta of light is the photon. And another thing you can think of is the quanta of electric charge that the photon is interacting with here is the electron. 
Another quanta of electric charge is the proton. These are all terms you might be familiar with from chemistry. But what I'm basically trying to say is quanta, when you talk about quantum mechanics and quanta, it's really just talking about the fact that we can divide things into little individual particles, whether those are atoms or smaller things like electrons and protons and photons. Okay. And in the next lecture, I'm going to discuss specific properties of these quanta, specifically the photon.